This wild parsnip plant is almost as tall as I am, and that can seem kind of scary if you know that these plants can give you a nasty burn if you get their sap on your skin and are then exposed to sunlight. However, these giant plants are not the ones you really need to worry about because they are pretty easy to spot, especially when they are in the stage where they have a bright yellow flower. What you need to worry about are the little ones like this that can go unnoticed due to neighboring plants. If I back up here, you see that that one is below the level of most of the nearby plants. There's the giant one from the previous frame. So if I was just walking around farther away, I might not see that at all. I only came over here to check out this patch because I was walking on a trail on my property all the way over there, and I saw this one. So where you see one giant parsnip plant, make sure you check around at a lower level for smaller ones, because those are the dangerous ones that are going to give you a problem if you don't get rid of them. You can see I have one here that has already gone to seed. It has started to develop the light green seeds, and then this central pod, the seeds are starting to brown, indicating that they are getting ready to eventually fall off the plant on their own. These seeds can then survive in the ground for several years, giving you a wild parsnip infestation that takes a while to get rid of. Now, the best way to manage individual plants is simply to pull them out by the root. This is a little easier to do when the soil is wet, because if the soil is very dry, sometimes the stalk will just break off, leaving the root in the ground. However, be careful if you are doing this once the seeds have formed, because you don't just want to toss the plant on the ground, the seeds might still be viable, and then again you'll just get more plants next year. So if you are seeing these seeds start to form in the pods on the top, make sure you bring along a trash bag and bag these up so you don't just throw the seeds on the ground and make your wild parsnip problem worse. You can mow these, but you need to be careful to do it at the right time. If you do it too early in the year, the plants will simply come back and then continue to try and flower and seed. The one I show here is about at the right time where it is flowered, but it does not have any seeds yet. So if I were to mow this plant or cut the stalk off at the base, that should kill it and it will not come back. But you have to be very careful when mowing a patch because you can have two plants right next to each other like I have here. And you see this one has already developed seeds. So I would not want to mow this or I would just be spreading the seeds around again, making my problem worse instead of better. So before you mow a patch, you can go through and check if you only see flowering plants that do not have seeds yet, it's safe to mow. If some have seeds, then it's too late to mow the entire patch, but you can go through and clip off some of the individual seed pods, bag those, then continue to mow. These plants tend to be sneaky and grow in clusters, so when you see one, there are probably more nearby. For example, if I pan over, you can see there's one in the distance there. And again, you really want to get these because if they get all of those seeds in the ground, they can just live in the ground for years and give you an infestation that you have to spend years getting rid of, like I've been doing on this property. I have another video linked in the description of this one that shows mowing one of these patches and then checking in on it throughout the summer to see how the plants progress or come back. So you can check that out, or if you have a question or suggestion about managing your own wild parsnip infestation, please leave a comment in this video. Thank you.